Today, I'm asking the big question. Are lenses like this, kit lenses, any good for photography? It is a question a lot of photographers ask themselves at some point. And very recently, I've been asking myself the very same question. As a lot of you probably know, a kit lens is a lens that comes in a bundle with a camera and usually saves you a few quid rather than buying the two separately. Kit lenses tend to be cheaply made. I mean, listen to this quality plastic. And I think there's a bit of a stigma around lenses like this that because they don't come with a heavy price tag, they're very basic and terrible for photography. And I'll hold my hands up here. I used to think the exact same way. I've had the Sony a6400 nearly for a year now. It's a fantastic camera, but I've actually never used a kit lens for photography. Honestly, the reason behind it is I have other lenses that do a far better job for what I need them for. But for some people, splashing £1,000 on a lens, let alone a camera body, is not a viable option yet. It will be. It will be in the future. Just work hard. One day, it will be yours. It used to be in exactly the same position. I know, I know the struggle, I know how it feels. So I thought today it'd be a fun challenge to go out with the Sony a6400 and the standard kit lens and see what we can create. This will be the first time I have used a kit lens for photography in about five years. But honestly, I reckon you can get some great shots with this lens. I mean, to be fair, if I can't, I'm a terrible photographer. <laughs> Oh, here comes the glorious rain. Love living in North Yorkshire. It's always miserable and raining. But I have come out to York today to give myself the best chance of shooting with the kit lens. And I haven't been in this city since I moved out. And you know what? Even though it's miserable, even though it's raining, it is great to be back. So the lens I'm gonna be shooting with today is the Sony uh, 16 to 50 f3.5 to f5.6. Now this is the standard kit lens that comes with a lot of the Sony a6000 series of cameras. But the first area I'm gonna be exploring today is the market area, the shambles and the minster. This should give me quite a good variety of shots opportunities from maybe some street portraiture to some wider kind of city street shots. So we'll see what we can go and capture. And with this being a 16 mil lens, I reckon we can get some good wide shots. Something I have to take into consideration today when shooting with the standard kit lens on the Sony is it has a variable aperture, which basically means my aperture is determined by what focal length I'm shooting at. So say for example, I'm shooting at 60 millimeter, the widest this lens goes in terms of focal length, my minimum aperture is gonna be f3.5. But if I go to the maximum focal length of this lens of 50 mil, my minimum aperture is gonna be 5.6. Now when I'm shooting, I much prefer using a lens that has a fixed aperture like the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 because no matter what focal length I'm shooting at, the aperture is always going to remain the same. Now one of the biggest downsides to kit lenses that are available, you're not going to be able to get great separation between your subject and background compared to something like a 50 f1.8. But that's not really a fair comparison as one of those lenses is a prime lens and the other one is a zoom lens. A more appropriate comparison would be the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 shot at 50mm and this lens that shot at 50mm. So what I'm focusing a lot on today when shooting with this lens because it is available is getting as wide as possible. I'm more focusing on wider city street shots rather than street portraiture because I kind of know the limitations of this lens. Don't you just love the consistency of British weather and the light? It is lovely. Even though this lens is available, I do have a good set of focal lengths to use. Focal lengths that closely resemble what our eyes see. And when shooting certain scenarios like landscapes, cityscapes, or anything that requires a wider focal length, you won't be able to tell that it was taken with a kit lens. I guarantee if I posted some of these shots on Instagram and said I shot them with the Sigma 24 to 70, none of you would call me out on it because you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Before 
before we look at the image quality of the lens itself, something I want to touch on very briefly is the build quality. Now, like a lot of kit lenses, it is made very cheaply, it is made from plastic, but I don't try and look at this as a negative because the two things you get back in return really is portability and lightness. The positive with this is when you are shooting with a kit lens, you almost look like a tourist. You don't draw attention to yourself. Great if you're really just starting out in photography. Also, something else I just want to throw in here is with kit lenses, they're often not weather sealed. However, I have taken lenses out in the past that have no weather sealing and they have been fine. I've been able to take a slashing from the rain. However, just be careful because your mileage might vary. So I've been doing quite a lot of shooting with the A6400 and I've said it before and I'll say it again. This camera is absolutely fantastic. If you're looking for your very first camera ever, this is a great place to start. I have made a full video on it. You can check it out in one of the eye corners. And as well, the kit lens has performed tremendously with the autofocus. Face focus, eye focus, I'm actually really impressed. In terms of image quality, I don't think this lens does too badly. It's not the sharpest lens out there, but it isn't soft either. I think there's a stigma that kit lenses are soft and they don't produce a great image. But from the test and the shooting I've been doing today, I call BS on that. When I was starting out doing photography, I was using the Nikon D5200 and the standard kit lens, which was the 18 to 55. And I think it had the same variable aperture as the Sony. But what that lens gave me was a challenge. It set limitations. But from that, I was able to learn so much more because I was able to focus on the most important part of photography, not the equipment, creativity. When I had the idea for this video, I was very skeptical on whether or not I could get great shots using a kit lens. But I think that was because I was associating it with the last time I used a kit lens and that was when I was very first starting out in photography where my skills weren't as refined as they are now. So when revisiting using a kit lens, I was able to put all my experience to use. I was able to play around with framing, composition, using the correct aperture and understanding the limitations of the lens but not letting that limit what I can create. At the end of the day, kit lenses aren't terrible and you can create a lot of great photography using these types of lenses. And I think as well, this might just be me, but I think a kit lens is one of the most important lenses you'll ever use. It is probably the first lens you'll ever have, but from using it and understanding how it works, you'll be able to focus, as I mentioned earlier, on creativity and you'll be able to understand a lot more of the technical side of photography when you're just starting out. I'm also really interested to find out as well, what was your very first lens? Let me know in the comment section below. And before we end today's video, let's have a look through the hashtag CP photos. Okay, let's just jump straight in. We're gonna start with this photograph right here. This is a really cool shot by xplr.visuals. I really like what we've done there. This one as well by Street Ronettes of this person. Really cool, nice city street portraiture going on right there. I like this one as well by Moustache Lens, probably butchered that. I also like the little bit of reflection you got going on there as well. I was looking at the top results, let's go over to recent and have a look at a few more. I'm vibing this one by Travel Geography Life, I like the blue tones that you've captured of the shroud right there. This is a really cool one by Mika of the street portraiture of this gentleman right here, great shot as well. And this one's a bit insane by Dan's Shutter Moments. I love the lights and I love the long exposure, the creativity behind that. There's some, there's some vibing shots right there. And we're gonna have a look at two more today. I like this one by Brett Harrison. Um, I like the reflection shot of the man. Uh, perfect, love it, it's fantastic. And our final one today is I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll down a bit. I'm not gonna look and we're just gonna stop right here. And I'm gonna choose one from here. I like this black and white one by RB Shoots. I really like that. Is it black and white? No, it's uh, muted colors. I really like that. It's a really cool shot. That was perfect timing. One of my lights just died. What were the chances of that? I was really confused for a second then. All right, and that is where I'm going to be leaving today's video, guys. I have got a POV coming pretty soon uh, from Edinburgh with the Sony A6400. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you liked today's video, make sure you hit the like button. But until next time, keep creating, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.